when I first started, most of the people I ended up doing business with were pretty bad. And when I found good people, which were more rare than the bad people, I'd stick with them. I had whatever, you know, we'll just stay with you. I've been molding my rubber with the same guy since 1986, January. Um, I will not move. I mean, a friend of mine, I, I, I prefer to deal with friends of mine, honestly. And people say, I don't mix your friends with business. That hasn't worked for me. Um, once I started mixing my friends and business, I started being very successful. <clears throat> it took us about three years to stop saying climbers and start saying athletes because half of my market now is mountain bikers. Um, it's, we're not the climbing, we're a multi-sport company. And I developed uh, five different slogans which kind of, I don't even care how useful they are as, as far as, um, as marketing goes, and they are, some of them are. But every single one is, there's a, there's a kernel of truth that represents the company in some way. It was for the world's most exciting sports, that's more our most exciting one, but it's got us away from climbing because we're doing you know, people who do base jumping and parkour and, and trail running and slack line and, and climbing. So you get, it's a collection of sports that all were, they're very, all very highly dangerous and I needed some way, some umbrella phrase to say, this is what we do. These are the sports that we're in. Um, and then by the world's most exciting athletes, that's pure marketing again. But then we had uh, another one, athlete driven. Company is athlete driven. We write that on, on some of the ads now. And that's very important because everything we do, in fact, when I started the company, I said, well, if I'm successful, it will only because everything I did was for the athletes. Back in the old in the old days, it was all about climbers. So every decision I made, is this better for climbers? This is not better for climbers. And and you know, and people say, Well, why don't you just give the shoes away? Well, that doesn't make the shoes feel valuable either. There's a, there's a correct price that gives it the right value and people are proud to own it. If you get something for, for free, there's, a, there's, a little, there's, there's less uh, pride of ownership. And I don't think uh, uh, people appreciate the product. So by charging the right amount, not too much, but not too little, people get, have, they're happy to own the product. They're happy that I got a good deal, it's a great value, um, and it's, it has some, you know, it's worth something. They just put up all new holds, so I don't know anything about oh, okay. what's going on here. Oh, much harder than before. Oh, those rotten kids. Okay. <laughs> Where are all my jugs? What is that? Maybe Patriot's a jug. Let's see how that goes. What does 510 stand for? Well, the difficulty in climbing right. is was originally created, the, it's called the... Uh, Yosemite Decimal System, and it was originally created by the Sierra Club. And uh, the five meant it was roped climbing; that it was uh, you needed to uh, to place gear. You, I mean, I'd take my rope, I'd hook it to something, and then I'd I'd be belayed down there. So if I fell, the rope would catch me. Someone grabs onto it and and, and freezes uh, the rope. So, but then that, it was just anything was called fifth class climbing. But after a while, um, it was the, 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 the difference in the difficulty was gigantic. It was too much. So they started going, well, let's call that one 5.1 or 5.2 or 5.3. And then around in the 60s, they got up to... Uh, 5.9, and they didn't know where to go because in a mathematical sense, after 5.9, you would have six, but six was already taken. That was big wall climbing. Um, so they changed the, uh, they just, someone just said, well, we'll just pretend it's not mathematical, we'll call it 5.10, which, so that was, and then, things, uh, that, that's what really started that whole, uh, well, I shouldn't say it. 5.9, everything got loaded in 5.9, and as soon as someone went 5.10, then half of the things that were called 5.9 were really 5.10, and they changed, so all the ratings had to be changed at that point. It's a little difficult down here. Sports where people become fanatics about it, either because 
the sport just draws them in that hard, but usually it's because you're risking your health yeah, and your life, or whatever it is, on the sport. You know, free running or parkour, where you're jumping from building to building, you fall and you die. Climbing, in certain cases, you fall and you die. Uh, mountain biking, you fall and you break your back. Um, you uh, uh, Base jumping, you fall and you die. Uh, slack lining, high wire, you fall and you die. Uh, so a lot of these things are low, low, on a low slack line where they do the gymnastics, you fall, you break your back. Um, these people have a tendency to be real fanatics about their sports because your health depends on it. Uh, and then you want the very, very best equipment, which puts our high-end stuff uh, as, and it's cheap. And what's your life worth? Is it worth a hundred bucks? Do you want to save, <coughs> what, the parkour guys, they were wearing some crap rubber. Uh, on a cheap, 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 cheap shoe. Uh, it's like, you know, a $15 shoe. Um, and they were wearing that in England, these guys that were jumping, you know, building the parkour free running. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember the, there was a contest. Red Bull put on a, uh, the first, or the it was at the second one, the second uh, world championships. It was just this year uh, for, for free running or parkour. And it was kind of raining. And the very first guy slipped and had, just broke his leg massively. Everyone went running back and put on their 